Hey guys, before we start, a quick shout out to Alpha Dog Nutrition for sponsoring this podcast. Alpha Dog products are now available at dusupply.com and you can use code ALPHADOG15 at checkout for 15% off and a credit for free shipping to try it yourself. Now let's get you to your podcast. Fielder. He's gone to the dogs. Hello, friends. Uh, once again, we're here with the Gone to the Dogs podcast, this time up in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, up here hunting and visiting with the Smiths, Randy Smith and his son Troy. And we've got a good conversation for you today. Uh, we're going to kind of put the spotlight on the younger Smith, uh, Troy, because uh, he was recently awarded the uh, Outstanding Youth uh, Award for the Tring Walker Breeders and Fanciers Association, which that's quite an honor. And uh, we want to talk to Troy about that. But, you know, I enjoy these trips so much up to Pennsylvania each year, and I try to get up here at least a couple of times and Randy, you've been so gracious to invite me up, and uh, man, I, I was in West Virginia doing a bench show, and uh, uh, to recognize and and appreciate a, a longtime friend, John Sturgill, which we've recorded with him, but uh, it was just too close to Catanning not to come on up, you know, so uh, here I am one more time eating your food, enjoying your hospitality. Yeah, well, we're having a good time again. We had we had a good hunt last night and had a good day today so far, and I've, hopefully we'll repeat the process tonight again here. Oh, yeah. Springtime in Pennsylvania. It's beautiful up here. Everything's budding out nicely, and, uh, of course, it'll be Circle Point City here coming up. <laughs> but, uh, Troy, it's it's good to be on the mic with you. Uh, mm -hmm. You're... Uh, as I asked you before, so I'd appear I knew what I was talking about. You're 17 years old now, right? Yes, sir. So you're a junior in high school, I believe, right? Yep. That's right. And you just had your prom here this past weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you have a brother, Cole. He's, what, a couple years younger? Yep, two years younger than me. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's never a dull moment around here when I'm here with – the all the buddies that come in and the bikes and the four wheelers and I understand the Jeep has now entered <laughs> the scene. All kind of motorized vehicles yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. Well, I I really do feel like it's kind of a homecoming for me. You guys have made me feel so welcome up here each year. And of course, hey, I know that there's a lot of people that are envious of me to get to come up here and hunt with these Lone Pine Tree and Walkers that uh, everybody's talking about across the country. And I've uh, been fortunate now. I don't know. It's been probably four or five years that I've been coming up now. I don't know. Do you know, Randy? Yeah, at least, I would say, yeah, maybe. about that long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in 2016, that's when we kind of got acquainted when your Sioux female won the world hunt. and Yeah, we soon and, started to hunt together after that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then, uh, uh, you know, I've had you on the podcast several times, and the last time I had you on with John, your your partner, yeah. John Strickland, and man, that podcast really went through the roof on downloads, so you guys are good. The sponsors love you kind of guys. <laughs> well, yeah, it's great. We're we're glad to do it. We're This has been the, my life's work here, and Troy's following right along with me here and we're getting to share a lot of good times together in the woods and probably probably troy went to his first tree i would guess at maybe three years old something yeah. like that yeah. he's been <laughs> not afraid of the dark since <laughs> since the first time oh uh, he's not afraid of the dark no <laughs> and i and i'm envious at my stage in life uh, you know getting up and down these hills is not so easy and but, uh, you know, last night, man, we made, what, six trees? And I believe yep. I made it pretty close to pretty, all six yep, of them. Yep, it was pretty, pretty good. We got, we got fairly close to 
to them each time. And yeah, they showed us a coon every time and it was good work. It was almost full moon of moons on its way out right now, but it was uh, still pretty moonlight, but seemed like the game was moving better than it has been here. It's been a f tough spring this this season here to uh, really get after many coons, but uh, we're hoping it'll turn around now here a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we hunted two new ones last night you'd never hunted with That's before. That's right. Yeah, we had uh, – it's kind of interesting. It, it turns out that way, but both of these dogs, of course, out of Lone Pine females um, and uh, an old frogger. Frog, yeah. Everybody knows, knows who Frogger is these days. He's been a pretty popular stud. And, uh, yeah, we hunted your false prophet pup, the young young superstar that's coming on strong. And I think through Clayton Stark, Stark Outdoors, his YouTube channel and all, Clayton's been hunting him for quite a while. For yeah, you. Clayton hunted him for about six months after I had him just, just barely, just lightly started. Clayton took him and... It didn't take any time at all till he was reliably treeing coons for him nightly. And, uh, yeah, Frogger's a really good reproducer. I'm well pleased with – we kept three out of the th – I bred to him three times so far, and we've kept three. And uh, the one I got – give partnership to Chris Saunders. She just got in the final six of the super stakes and, and profit and then – one we call Farah that uh, my buddy John Owen, after I had her going, he took her up to North Northwest PA there and hunted her a few months, and she's uh, she's making a world class dog. I feel she's oh yeah, oh good. yeah, fun to listen to a real hustling little female. Uh, <laughs> there was several things that I took away from our hunt last night, but I think the best one was, I guess the last drop we made with Farah. We had cut profit loose, and he had treed down over the hill to the right. I remember when we cut him along the field there, he went, oh, I don't know how far, maybe 7,500 yards or something, and then just cut down over the hill there and got treed. Wasn't that the way that yeah, went Yeah, yeah, yep. He was probably, probably about 100 yards or so. Yeah. He, he just cut in real quick, winded a cone there, and – it wasn't no time till he was treed, and then we just well, cut I noticed, fair. Yeah, you went back to the back of the box, which is kind of atypical of, of hunting with you usually single them out. But I've noticed the last couple of trips, you're putting a lot of pressure on these young dogs to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty single-minded and, and doing their own thing. But yeah. the thing was funny to me was when you cut Farah, she went down through there, man, like a freight train. And when she went by Prophet, and of course he's he's loud, and, <laughs> and he, yeah, she didn't even cock her ear toward him. No, she didn't was... look, didn't turn her head, <laughs> just straight on by, man. I got things to do. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, that's fun that, to watch. Yeah, it is. It's uh, that's the name of the game today. You know, the dogs got to be burying in there and doing their own thing. So. As soon as they are kind of set in their ways, I just start putting the pressure on yeah. them a little bit at a time and trying to trying to set them up to do the things they're not supposed to so that it becomes normal to them to do the right thing, you know? Yep. Well, uh, she's about 17 months, did you say? Yeah, I think, think Fair is 19 and Profit's okay. like coming 14. All right. Yeah. right. Right in there. I got you. Well, we, I think, we said it was what six singles. I think we saw yeah. last night. I think Farrah got the edge a little bit. She had four, and Prophet had two. I yeah, believe. she she so, was she got to be loose a little bit more well, than he did. And, well, when he was loose, though, man, he hunted. Oh, he really yeah. went hunting good yeah. and made covered a lot of ground. But the coon just weren't moving all that good earlier on. No, later. they seemed to move better later. But uh, yeah, they uh, they they're they're good. Hard hunting dogs, they keep they keep moving and keeping their wheels turning all the time. Yeah. Well, the technology has just made coon hunting so much more enjoyable, especially, you know, when I was a kid, Troy, you 
you can't imagine this, I guess, but, you know, back in the day, we had no kind of tracking device. The only thing we had were those flaps on either side of our head. If we didn't hear them, we didn't have a clue where they were, yep. you know? Yeah. But now you sit in the, in the side by side and look at the drive track. And, yeah. It's... And I noticed last night you were kind of the screen man. I mean, you were giving the information back to your dad about where the, where the dogs were. But that's such an enjoyable way to hunt, I tell you. Yeah, the, the best part about it is is that the worry of recovering the dog or knowing where they're at or if they're near in danger or anything, it's all pretty much wrapped up with that. And it's it sure has made coon hunting so much more efficient and enjoyable than even when, when I started. I started with a bell, so I knew at least what direction they left out of there. And I soon got a wildlife three-channel yeah. You know, tracking system. That's the system. first I had. Yep. Too. Yeah, and uh, it was it was wonderful. You know, for back then, at least you you knew what direction they were in, and you also knew if they were treed or treed or not by the tree switch on there. But other than that, you know, they were far from what what we got now. That's for sure. I call them pothole feel compared to what we have now with the, <laughs> the alpha. You know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're prepared to do any kind of correction or anything at any given moment you can look at that screen and know if a dog's thinking about doing something you don't want them to do that that's huge the technology is really good and you know i i've said before i was privileged although i didn't know a whole lot of what was going on with it but to work in the early testing stages of the garmin uh, back in the old astro 220s and uh the dc what 20s and 30s or 50s and and there kevin brickhouse was uh working with garmin and lived there in raleigh and he would call me up and he'd say can we go out and take put some collars on some dogs i got some some testing i need to do and uh, so i would do that and of course i was had to sign a confidentiality agreement and all that stuff i didn't know what he was doing anyway but it was it's fun to see the evolution of that in our sport and it definitely has changed the sport oh for dramatically. sure yeah i wrote one time about what were the 10 most important innovations in coon hunting and hands down the gps collar yeah know? for sure but there's a lot of other things there like uh, the tritronics and the the John Wick frog leg waders yeah. and all those kind of things. Well, you know I, what? I, the main focus that I wanted to 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 make here with our podcast today was uh, to uh, talk to Troy because I haven't had him on before, and uh, to talk about. Um, well, of course, you went out to Walker Days here. That's been what two, three weeks ago. Uh, Easter weekend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why did they have a hunt on Easter? Yeah. <laughs> it's I guess it's in the bylaws that it's like the third yeah, weekend exactly. in April, no matter what, you know. So well, I, I get to ask that question now. They used to ask me, you know, why are you doing yeah. this? Why are you doing R this? Right. <laughs> well, that's great. You know, Walker Days was always a fun hunt. And we talked last night a little bit, Randy, about how they've changed things up a little bit. They have an RQE now on Thursday night instead of the Lee Crawford hunt, which they had at the time that I was there. But um, this award that you received out there, Troy, this year was pretty special. And uh, when your dad sent me some video clips and pictures and all, I had to to share it with people because I was really pretty proud of what you accomplished. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what did, did was it outstanding youth? What, what was the designation that you won? I believe it was, they called it the outstanding youth of the year award for, okay. for Walker days up there. All right, cool. Well, uh, did you go there expecting anything like that? Or was that totally a surprise? That, that was pretty much a total surprise. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, those are always the best, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's great. And I, I shared with your dad last night when, when I was in the military and went to uh, the Air Force, I was in basic training in 1969, and the Plot Association decided to give me the Sportsman of the Year Award, which is this, it's voted on by the board, you know, and I imagine that's probably the mm -hmm. way your award was. They 
they seek out, you know, outstanding individuals. And so I, my, my folks had to go and receive the award for me. I, Uncle Sam had me out there doing push ups and running laps and, <laughs> and moving piles of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. What, you know, Walker Days is, is always been a big deal. Uh, Randy, you've won it a few times. I, think. I never, I never won Walker Days. I, I, uh, I've had high scoring opposite sex and got okay. got real close uh, a couple different times, but I've never won Walker Days. But we, we've we've gotten some Hall of Fame dogs. In yeah, there. we we've had three dogs inducted into the Hall of Fame, and Tom had been voted Breeder of the Year once, and myself another time, and. Uh, yeah. Oh, we've been going for – I've been going with the, Tom and I have been going to Walker Days for probably over 30 years. Yeah. Hardly missed – maybe missed a year or two f- because it yeah. would fall on yeah. Easter. Yeah. And we probably would have come home this year like after hunting Friday night. But when I knew Troy was up for that award, mm. we opted to leave early – since Easter morning and mm-hmm. to get home for everything then. So yeah. we made it, yeah, made it in the nick of time. But, uh, yeah, but uh, we've always enjoyed going. And back, you know, years ago, it was one of the biggest events of the year. Oh, absolutely. And along with, I think, uh, you know, the other breed hunts and everything, it's kind of fallen to the wayside a little. But it was better attended, I think, this year. And um, Lady – got qualified Thursday night and uh then she won the whole they had a money hunt both Friday and Saturday night and she won the whole thing on Friday and Farah placed in the registered division and then uh Saturday night Troy handled Farah and placed her in the registered part of the hunt. Right. So right. yeah, it was good. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you know, Walker Days used to be huge, and uh, you know, a lot of excitement and all. The, back in the stud dog era, you oh know, yeah, mm-hmm. when there was uh, magazines were full of stud dog ads, and, and particularly remember Sackett Junior. Back in the day, you couldn't flip a page in American Cooner without seeing the Grand Night Champion stud dog out of him. Yeah. And, and all, but well, Troy, back on this uh, uh, award, um, is that something you share with your classmates at school, or do they have any? Cause I see you laughing because you know, when I it's funny, Ella, my wife, and I went to high school together, she had no clue I was a coon hunter. Mm-hmm. We dated in high school, she had no clue, <laughs> you know. I mean, that was just something my dad and I did together and mm-hmm. i didn't really i didn't know any other kids in my high school that were coon hunters mm-hmm. and we had a big graduating class do, do you do your friends at school know anything about your hunting activities uh, or, a good many of them do, do? i tell them about it uh, yeah. but there's there's hardly any people who could relate to knowing what that is whenever i tell them about it you know yeah they, they you have to experience it to, mm-hmm, to do exactly. it. i know it's your brother his buddies down here, they like those two wheeled <laughs> conveyances, yep. you know, and they're all into that. And it's yep. kind of like my my son was with different activities. You know, we started out coon hunting, but you you started with your dad at a pretty young age, didn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Pretty pretty darn young. Yep. Do you have any uh, recollections, any memories of those early hunts? Oh or yeah. You? Oh yeah. <laughs> different. Just. Going out there and train coons all the time, you know, when yeah. I was younger, you know, yeah. trapping, stuff like that. Oh, that's, yeah. That, that's so, really you, I know your dad's a, a, Randy's a trapper, and of course, with these fur markets going away and all, that's a sad time. Yeah. I've been here when you had to walk in full of fur and uh, such beautiful stuff and the way you put it up and everything but so you like the trapping part too oh yeah mm-hmm. i liked about everything he uh took us out to do so yeah mm-hmm. that's the way i was as a kid too i just wanted to be with my dad and the things he did were outdoors and that was a lot of fun you know yeah. for me yeah so um do you remember when you picked out one of these nice walker puppies and decided this one's going to be mine oh uh, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you Bertha. remember? Bertha was oh, the first one. 
Well, yeah, I'd, I'd say, I mean, there was a couple I helped my dad out with, with picking one out, but Bertha was like one of the very first ones that I kind of said, this is the one I want here. Yeah. But there wasn't very much of an option. She only, there was a pretty small litter, mm -hmm. you know. Well, she was out of the world champion, Sue. Uh, yes. Lone Pine Biffy Sue. And the Louie dog mm -hmm. that was uh, litter mate to, uh, to old Fran, we yes. called her. Yep. And one of my favorites, and they were out of uh, Frankie mm -hmm. and uh, girl, girl, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bertha, you and Bertha have had a lot of fun. I remember. How old is she now? Four, four. four. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay. So she was about fifteen months old or so that when I came up and we went around the cornfield there along the river. Yep. Or along, yeah. Yeah. She, Crooked I Creek. remember she treated, I believe three singles that night and yeah. just kind of slid under all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I remember so I knew it well. she was going to be special. Yeah. She, we, I probably had more time in the woods with her personally than any dog that I've ever had mm -hmm. here because when Troy picked her out and we, you know, got her going and everything. We just, when we went, we took her and we were, you know, working on her uh, together all the time. Mm -hmm. So we really put a lot of time into her and she treated us thousands of coons. She was, yeah. she's, you know, not probably just in her prime right now, but we, we moved on to another chapter in her life. And Troy can tell you a little bit about that. We just got. Yeah got done having babies out of her yeah so, so you, you kind of moved her into the production unit a little earlier than some of your females yeah well right? it just i hadn't uh i hadn't had any pups out of bone collector here in five years and that was my plan whenever the uh, I, I had semen from him that he every five years i wanted to have a litter mm -hmm. out of him and so she came in heat, and I left it up to Troy what he wanted to do, and I knew they would be a hot commodity, and you know, so we just opted to to do that. So we we worked on whelping pups for Bella had pups out of Big D, and then two weeks later, Bertha had pups out of Bone, and it was winter time, and we spent a lot of time down in the building down there with pups. So they're. But they're running around in the yard now. They're beauties, you know, so everything so far so good. Well, I was just going to say, I just got introduced to them here a few minutes ago yeah. down here. They introduced yeah. themselves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's one thing I've noticed up here about your pups. I've, I've never seen a shy one. Here. Yeah. They're, they're all the, very bold, very personable. Mm -hmm. Those pups are, Troy, they are nice. They are beautiful, oh, yeah. blanket back mm -hmm. dogs. Yeah, they're, nice. they're pretty. Yep, very nice. Really, really pretty. Yep. But, you know, that color's only skin deep. Yeah, it's funny that's to right. see the, the contrast now. The dogs there, the, the pups you have out of Big D, which are, uh, you know, they're, they show the white. Yep. Of course, yeah, they're he open. was a big white dog, mm -hmm. you know, so you expect that for sure. But And some people prefer that. Some people would yeah. love to, you know, have an open spotted dog. And uh, It really yeah. doesn't make any difference at all to me. You know, yeah. I just like a, a big, stout, houndy type of dog, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to me whether they're open or black or yeah. what they are, you know. Yeah. But uh, Well, that yeah, was always nice. – yeah, the striking thing to me about Sue, the world champion, was big female. You yeah, know, big, and she's doing, still doing well. Still she? tough, tough as she's, she's hardly ever had a sick day in her life. You yeah. know, she's she's okay. a tough, tough girl. Yeah, yep. yeah. she's uh, edging towards fourteen now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Well, Troy, you you kind of got into competition pretty quick. I mean. Um, how long has it been since you, do you remember hunting the first cast or handled the dog the first time or is that uh, to yeah. me since then? Well, I'd say I was probably 13 or something like that. Was it Bertha was the first cast you handled on? Probably. Uh, I handled, think so. Handled yeah. probably, yes. Yeah, yeah. He, he was along on several casts. But. And I don't want to embarrass you, but I remember the night that we hunted Be uh, Bertha there, I uh, mentioned when she treated those three singles. And you were handling her, and, and your dad and I were back and forth. He said, now watch him. 
and you were down there aiming your female just the right <laughs> way, you know. And I mean, I could tell you were serious about yeah. it at that point, man. Yeah. You were, you had, you had all the, all the, the moves down, you know. Yep. You were, but uh, you, you soon uh, started seeing some results. You did pretty well with Bertha, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you finished her to grand. It's part of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she's a two time they call it Grand Night oh, Two she, or whatever. She's a Grand Night Two yeah. already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And he he won he got reserve state champion in one year, then the next year he won the state hunt with her and he got reserve state youth PKC champion with her one year and won uh Walker sectionals and now last year you made the final four at Walker Day, but you weren't hunting Bertha in that. Case, no, I was you? not. You were hunting the little friend dog. I That's believe, correct. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And of course we we talked about little friend. Mm-hmm. I, I think we did or did we today? No, I don't no, think we, we have, didn't. Okay. Yep, we haven't talked about. What about that, little friend? She she's out of Hardman's Jeb and and Fran that that uh, mm-hmm. we talked about out of Tree Sam and Frankie and and track girl and uh she's a she's a sweet dog and uh yeah troy did did great he actually got in saturday night uh chris saunders guided us that night tell him tell him troy about how that you remember the hunt that night Mm -hmm. when chris guided us yeah we uh we cast it out with uh we had to go out to Nova Club, right? Yeah, the satellite I think so. club, mm-hmm. and we got with this guide, and he took us out to where it was like a lake, a lake there, and it, there was just all, autumn olives and all sorts of mm. stuff there. It looked, it didn't look fit at all to turn a dog loose in there. So Chris said, "You know, it might be a little while to drive, but let's go back to my place and we can turn loose there." So that's what we did, and we did pretty good that night. Treat a cute good many coons and we would mm-hmm. got into got enough to yeah. be able to advance there what besides knowing uh i i'm sure that you've got confidence when you go out on a cast that your dog's prepared and that you've got a good dog and that's got to count for a lot but what is it about competition that you enjoy the most oh, oh. You know, there's just so many things with it. I, I love just going out there and, you know, just the feeling of the competition, seeing what's all going on. A game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dog needs to do this to win. Their dog can win this way if they do this. Or I need a striker in here, get this many points. And it just it all, all, I just love it all, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I uh, – you know, I check up on you every once in a while. I'm way back, your dad. I said, is Troy really enjoying this? And he said, oh, yeah, he loves it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's great. Well, okay, kind of flipping around here now. You you uh, are in high school. Tell me a little bit what you're doing in high school. What, what, How are you preparing for life after high school? Yeah, I go, I go to a technical school. They call it Lenape uh technical school up there uh i'm taking a construction class up there and well, i'm learning a whole lot of stuff doing that um <clears throat> you know i'm hoping one day i get to build my own house and that's really there helping me out some practical knowledge some skills uh, we hear that a lot today you know and you hear so much on the news about uh, you know, and I don't want to get on my stump here, but, you know, about repaying college loans and all this stuff. And people, the kids go through these schools and these schools just, oh, just, I want to use the word, but I'm not going to use it. But that, you know, a kids come out of college with so much debt and they don't have any skills when they come out. They've got a bunch of paper learning that's not applicable to to living and to earning a living. And I applaud you that for that because, you know, our grandson in down in Florida is going to a technical high school, you know, and believe me, it's not shop class of old. You guys yeah. are yeah. getting, you guys are getting a lot of education. Mm-hmm. It's not easy, is it? No, it's, it's pretty, it's, you got to be prepared. You got to really listen to what your instructors have to tell you and you got to, you know, mm-hmm. 
they actually do apply. things here. You they're know, building they're, they're building a house. That's what yeah. they're doing. They're mm -hmm. building a house. So. Yep, from yeah. the ground up. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that is so great to yeah. see that. Uh, you know, they the the high schools did that in Michigan when I lived there, mm -hmm. and uh, they would pick a each year the they would you know that particular program you know they build a house yeah and uh, so that's so well cool. we we have been lied to in this country in a lot of different ways but one of the main things is is teaching these kids that you know that to to only be doing things with with their mind and not with their hands and i think mm -hmm. it's equally important that they know sure. how to use their hands know how to get out of situations you know that like hey i'm broke down here i gotta check this i gotta you, you know they, they, it's it's well, really important to know things today i mean it's that's the the, you know, the problem is is we're sending these kids out into the world and they they don't have any real you know foundation on mm -mm. what to do with themselves you know so it's a, i think it's great it's really great oh and, i do too and, yeah you know there's a joke that goes around like the young person says, we're going to start a revolution. And the old guy like me says, well, how are you going to do that? You can't even start a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, right. I mean, you know, that's mm. the oversimplification. But, yeah, and and good for you, Troy. That's awesome, man. And Well, in fact, I think your dad's kind of put you to work. Uh, the, here, you and your brother doing some work on some uh, – uh, r renovations and stuff on some rental properties and all. And yeah, they worked all winter. Had a great winter. They they had buddies involved, and they, you know, it's it's nice that you don't look at work all the time as misery and toil. You know that they went and had fun while they yeah. were working, and they were making money and sure. still getting a job done and having fun. In the meantime, yeah. you know, it was a it was great. I I hope to put them all to work here, you know. Yeah. Keep, keep, yeah, it was great. Well, you know, that's the way America was built. And, you know, and usually like you, Randy, grew up on a dairy farm here in Pennsylvania and enjoyed spending time today with a couple of your brothers. And uh, mm -hmm. and you guys all grew up doing that. And, and, you know, learning those practical skills. And I think of my dad, you know, he, he had a 10th grade age education. But when he got out of the military after World War II, he knew he needed, uh, you know, a good solid job, so he served an apprenticeship as a pipe fitter. Mm -hmm. I think it was like five years or something, wow. right? four or five years, mm -hmm. and he made a good living his whole life, and he took a lot of pride in his work. You know, he mm -hmm. loved his job. He loved what mm -hmm. he did, and that's, you know, there's a saying that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Exactly. You know? Yep, that's so for sure. So find something that you enjoy, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I don't want to lecture you or in any way. I can't tell you anything that, that you probably don't know already, Troy. But uh, I told the kids when I spoke to them at the PKC World Hunt, our youth championship a few years ago, that, you know, all of you guys are sitting out there want to be a professional coon hunter. That's what you want to do for your life's work, you know. So do all those kids in the inner city. They want to play in the NBA. Yeah. But very few of them make it. And my – my sermon was get out there and get education, get a trade, learn a trade. You can make some money. You can buy that new truck and the new dog box and the new light and all that stuff and get yourself a nice dog. And you can coon hunt all you want, but you're not likely to make it just coon hunting, you know. So have you ever had any aspirations of just being a professional handler? Do you think that'd be fun? Or oh, I'm sure it'd be fun going all <laughs> over the place, but I never really thought about that being the only thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's cool. Well, um, he has a, He's got a business to take over here, so he's already mm -hmm. got his, go. his path has yeah. been mowed already. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. And and for our listeners that don't know, you uh, have Armstrong Pest Control, Randy, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. basically you control critters and bugs and everything in between. Right? Everything, yep. Yeah. We do it all. and um, Just getting into your busy season yep. coming up. Yep, we've just been working here for a couple weeks now, and it'll – from from about the first of April until middle of November, if the weather's good, we're, we're we have yeah. more work than we know what to do with most of the time. So, yeah. 
that's a blessing, you know, that we're, we're in a fairly, I don't know if I should say depressed area or not, but it's not like you see in Florida, you yeah. know, where it's, 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 it's fairly hard to have a small business in, in Armstrong County here in Western Pennsylvania, but we, we're doing good. And, you know, hopefully that'll continue here. Oh, yeah. Troy's going to, his plan is to stick with me here, I think, and we're going to do this sure. together. Yep. Absolutely. Outstanding. It, it sure is. Well, you know, on another side note, coming up here, I always enjoy visiting with your mother. Yeah. And, of course, your dad I enjoyed very much, too. Unfortunately, he passed. What's it been, a couple years now? Three, yeah, it'll maybe? be. Yeah, so it was a couple years uh, in February there. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, your mother's an amazing person, and uh, we we went to church today. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. That yeah. was great. And uh, uh, just a lot of nice people here in this area, and uh, just good stuff. And your mom, oh, man, she should be on the cooking channel. Yeah, she missed it. She she was uh she ran the bake shop at a local college here for oh quite a few years, but she should have been running her own show. Oh yeah. She could have been she could have made a fortune if, because you just can't get it like she it's does. It's amazing. It. Come in here last night I, I drove up from from West Virginia. It was about a three hour drive, I guess, by the time I got here it was about Ten o'clock when I got here, and you guys had the dogs loaded already, mm. and all, and we went hunting. But there was those what do you call them, those peach cookies? Yeah, she, peach like filled, filled or, <laughs> or, or, or almost like a fried pie, but it was a cookie with this filling. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> and so I had some of those last night before I went to bed, and then when you text me, you said, you know, those peach cookies go pretty good with coffee and so i had some more this morning yeah. then we go over there for lunch after church today and she oh awesome lasagna salad it's bread and and then the the coupe de grace of <laughs> that peach pie with the homemade ice cream yeah oh my yeah, she, gosh yeah, yeah she's she's, a, she's our angel she's, she's been sweetheart. the rock for everybody here yeah. and She's just the most selfless person that I've ever met. You know, she everything she'll she'll work all day long and start calling people to come and pick up everything that she worked on all day to just delving it out. You know, she, yeah, she yeah. has a servant's heart. Yeah, that's for sure. That's great. Well, Troy, what about Walker Days last year when you got in the Final Four? Did how'd it feel? No. Oh, it – it was really an experience, you know. I just going through there and making it through up through the levels. I was, I was like, man, I, I really enjoyed that. That was really uh, good. And it had to be. And at your age, let's see, were you still sixteen then, or were you seven? About sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, that's that's a big time there for sure. Yeah, he had yeah. to hunt three casts that night. He won the early cast and had a good score. Uh, I th if I bel if I f I think sh she scored three cones, must have had about six seventy five or six fifty something like that. Score. And uh, then the the late round, I don't remember who the other guys were, but he drew Scott Engel at at Scotty's club. It was at uh, Holmesville last year, and he ended up right at the end of the hunt. Fran was was split from the other dogs and she's the only one that had a coon. So that put him in the final four. And then he drew Ruby D with Timmy, Timmy Waters Timmy, and yeah. Willow with, um, Moorhead. Yeah. Kevin Morehouse Kevin house. Yeah. Kevin Morehouse. And then I don't remember what the fourth dog was, but now we're talking now it's wee hours in the, in the morning and, you know, you can imagine how. And his, <laughs> well, you begin to fade a little, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll never forget any it. energy drinks involved there. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> no. But uh, Willow, when she was open on the ground, she sounded very similar to Little Fran when she was locating. Mm. And one track that was tricky then. E, Troy called her treat a couple times and 
Oh, he was so upset with himself, and he turned around and looked at me, and he said, I, I, I just want to withdraw. You know, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Keep going, buddy. And she ended up treeing a cone off by herself there, and it was a good We, It was good. We, I, I remember feeling the truck up uh, before we started to head home in the daylight there at the end of the fairgrounds at Holmesville there. It was a long night, but it was a good one. We had... That was uh, a that was a great memory, you know. Oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. One of the greatest memories that I have is when my dad was about my age. Now we went to plot dates at Pomeroy, Ohio, and we had two dog. I had two dogs. I prepared these dogs. I was living in Michigan. They were half brothers, and uh, Dad decided he want, on Thursday night, the all plot night, he wanted to hunt in the veterans cast. He didn't like the competition that much, mm -hmm. but he wanted to go out with these fellows. And so he ended up winning the cast and had a better score than I did. I won my cast too, but he had the better score. So I said, well, we'll just take your dog. Well, he was mine, but the Wrangler dog, and I'll hunt him on through and we'll see if we can win this thing. We ended up opposite sex overall, <sighs> but we did it together. He yeah. got the mm -hmm. Thursday night hunt and I got the next two and, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, did you get to participate in the decision of who to breed uh, 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 Bertha Bert? to? Uh, a little bit? I mean, it was pretty, it was probably, you know, we had it all figured out even before we even started thinking about breeding her. It was pretty much figured out. Yeah. Here we yeah. breed her too. So, yeah. Yeah. We talked about it. I said, well, the first time that we. We breed her. It'll be the, the the timing will be right, and we'll breed it about the bone semen that I have there. And yeah. I said that'll, you know, that'll maybe get her, you know, start her off on a super note having, you know, when they're that then they're, they're wanted that much. You know, the people oh, are yeah. gonna put their heart and soul into them. I hope you know so to get her reproductive record on the, the right track of right out of the get go. Yeah. You know so. Yeah, she, she should, she should definitely do her well, part. Well, she has the genetics there yeah. you know, for sure, and if looks or anything to do with it, <laughs> those are going to be some really nice dogs. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. beautiful now. Yeah, they, really they are. are. Yep. Did you, you named her Bertha, right? Yep. Where'd mm -hmm. you get that name? That's a little bit unusual for a coon dog. Oh, I just came up with it one day. <laughs> she was a tank. She yeah, was just yeah. she, just huge and heavy headed and everything. Like Mama when she was a little, of, yeah, yeah. When she was little, like that, so he called her Big Bertha. Big Bertha. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, she's a fun dog to hunt. I've been with her a few times, and always, always out there working hard. She's got to hustle. She. Yep. Yeah. If she, she, she don't have anything, she's definitely that. She'll never has no reverse. You know, she's. Uh, going to get you somewhere under a coon, you know, hopefully. Yeah. She's she's pretty nice dog. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, Troy, how's it feel to be part of, you know, a, a institution here, really? I mean, the, you can't talk to a coon hunter anywhere in the United States that doesn't instantly recognize Lone Pine as being, you know, one of the major lines of walker dogs. And, uh, and here it is. This, you've grown up you know, with with these dogs down through the years. Do you remember as a kid or coming on up? You're a young man now. I don't think of you as a, as a kid anymore, really. And th th Was there any favorites that you had down through the years that you can remember? Oh, you know, Sue was always a favorite. Yeah. I like uh, Sue and Shot and, you know, yeah. Franny. She, I liked her, too. Yeah. Baby. You know. Baby, yeah. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I never got to hunt with Baby. I regret yeah. that always. Yeah. I know when we met out in Greencastle in 2016, you were hunting Baby yes. in the hunt. Mm -hmm. And I took the picture with, with you and Rick and Sue and Baby and, and Tom. Tom and, yeah. And that was uh, I'm yeah, kind of all, proud of, my, of that picture. Yeah, right? that's one of my all-time favorite yeah. pictures. But you, you have told me several times, too, Randy, that Baby was one of your favorites. Yeah, I think the about my – she was my favorite so far, I would say. She, she you know, the, we, we probably have had dogs here that maybe win more than her. She, but she was, she won easy for, for us when we took her all the more that she really got to go. But she just had 
all the chrome and the mouth and the locate and accuracy and now she, was she was out of bone she was out of bone and miss quickie yeah right mm -hmm. yep her and shot are like three-quarter sisters uh shot being out of jigs, jigs right yeah. yeah yep so yeah, yeah they, those were those were some real dogs and real good litters and uh have a lot of a lot of fond memories from from baby you know, she got in the final four of the UKC World Hunt in 17 and 18 both. Yeah. That put Rick in the final four of the World Hunt three years in a row. I don't know that that'll ever Probably be duplicated. Be, no, no, no. Nope. That was really something. The, the second time she was in the final four, Terry and I probably, we probably talked about this before, but we were off on a fishing trip with no service for a week or so. And soon as we started to come into Yellowknife, you know, and you start picking up cell service, that phone starts dinging, texts all them yeah. 150 texts, you know, <laughs> that you missed through that yeah. trip. And I'll never forget looking at one of them. And Rick says, in the final four tomorrow night, you know, and I couldn't believe it three years in a row. That was <laughs> that was in Mount Gilead, yeah. Ohio, there when uh, Willie won the world hunt there that year. But, uh, yeah, she was – extremely good to us and we only got to breed her twice but she was a good reproducer and just a she she never caused a minute's worth of trouble in her whole life you know she was yeah. just a just a sweetheart and from, what a blow it was just uh she died of uh, complications from puppies right? yeah the second litter there yep mm -hmm. yep but uh yeah it's just one of those things you know that the you know that those females are in danger whenever you do that, just the same as whenever you turn them loose hunting. And, uh -huh. you know, you can't, you don't live in fear of what could happen. You just, you know, do what you think is right at the time. And, yeah. and that's what, that's, that's it. And it happens. And, you know, I've, you know, this, this road to get here has not been a smooth one. I don't talk about the lumps. <laughs> but there's been a lot of them, you know, and, and, and there'll be more that there, you know, there's, there's always going to be loss with gain. That's just how life is, you yeah. know, but, uh, yeah, she, she, she di didn't live a long life, but she give us a long life worth of memory. She was, she was great. She was, she was great. Rick, Rick was hunting her at the PKC final four. She won the PKC state hunt one year and, the guys in the cast, of course, they would, you know, spent a full hour and a half or two hours in the same woods. And she had treed a couple coons and they were having trouble. And way out in there, she opened up a few times and come back. But when she, when she located it, she would just, it was so long and drawn out. Like it would just, she'd just lose air. Like, you know, <laughs> she would look and, uh, <laughs> One of the members of the cast said, "You hear that, fellas? That's the sound of it being completely over." <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't there to hear it, but Rick's, you know, it was like I, that's another thing I'll never forget. You know, it was like they were, you know, everybody knew that when she was treed, it was a pretty good chance it was going to have the meat there. You know, so that was that was well, a good thing. You look at the competition scene nowadays. And one thing becomes abundantly clear, at least to me, you got to have accuracy. Yeah, it's it, you've absolutely. got to have yep. a coon when you tree. Yep. It's so rapid fire. It's so, you know, it's for anything can happen at any time. You can't waste time going to empty. Well, you can't take the minus and overcome yep. it is one part of it. The other part is, you know, you, and that's what I. I appreciated last night about her yeah. hunt. We turned those young dogs loose. They made six treats. There were six coons. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's the that is the name of it, and it's it's gotten to be more and more and more so. The, the dogs are so good now, and it's it's partially because you know the you know genetics of. I mean, the guys are paying closer. I mean, when the when the purses are up the way that they are now, there's so much at stake that I think that you know breeding quality dogs and and everything has even reached an all-time level uh -huh. and then you know the dogs 
are trained to to the T now, you know, with all this, what we talked about with the alpha, with the, you know, with all the modern technology and everything, the dogs are just honed to, you know, to razor sharpness and, and they're just going to have, I mean, you know, you're, you need to, they're, that stuff are like, well, you know, the leaves are on so I'm gonna, it, it No, it's, you got to have it because you got to score it. And with thermals and everything now, that, that accurate dog is going to blow your doors off if you're not even, you can't be even three quarters of the way right. You know, mm-hmm. they've got to be as close to that yeah. hundred percentile as what they can possibly yeah. be or you're out. You know, it's just plain and simple. Well, the old ads, you know, people, it was pretty much they were all the same, what they said, Rock. And it was 90% accurate. Mm. This dog, you know, 90 percent's not good enough today yeah they i mean in in reality if you're if you're counting dens and things of that nature you know 90 is like a great mark but if you're you know if if you're talking that dog that you know they're gonna throughout that cast or whatever they're gonna give you a, a bad tree you, yeah. you're just not gonna win often enough you know right. I, I don't think you know they've got to really be right you know that's that is the name of the game. That's it's it's amazing, and I, I go back to the last time I recorded with you, Randy, was with John. You guys after you had won that uh, that super hunt, Joy Super Hunt, yes, with, with Lady, mm-hmm. and she just destroyed that cast. I mean, you know what? She had three singles, I think. Yeah, on her own, mm-hmm. and uh, well, Lady's Tree. There's another coon. I mean, it it almost becomes a foregone conclusion you know of course she can get a den oh yeah she can she can make a mistake there's no no doubt about that they can all do that but uh just like it i I went along on the late round with john at the at that slam at seventy five hundred dollar slam hunt at walker days and uh you know, it was just like she she th- they turned loose in there, and they all they all three of the dogs got ahead of coon treed by themselves, and then soon find out there is no there's no tracks in the woods. You know, the coons aren't down, hmm. and she just goes into coon tree and mode the other way. You know, she's finding lay up coons, and yeah. it's hard to you know that's hard to deal with. You know, when they're doing that, Absolutely. you know, but she's. Yeah, she's she's definitely a one in a million. I mean, I, she's, but she's had more opportunity. I've 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 had other dogs that were that same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that same same type of dog, you know. But she, yeah, we we got noticed, and it's it's been a great mm-hmm. ride so far. And John's been, you know, a godsend for me for me to get them, you know, having my message out there yeah. without me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've I've been around a long time, and uh, as they say, you know, I've I've lived a whole lot more years than I've got left to go. Yeah. <laughs> but it <laughs> was too. fun for me last night. To, we're sitting there in the in the buggy, and John. So we've been waiting forever to hear from him. He's in that truck hunt, yeah, there in Tennessee. And then when he called in and get his recount of the thing, but the whole part about that conversation to me was you know to, John's done a lot of winning mm-hmm. everybody in the Coonhound world knows him as he, as they do you too but you know it's still the that Mr. Steve you're welcome here at the house and tell me you want to oh, come yeah. got a bedroom for you mm-hmm. come down I'll take you hunting I'll drive you to every tree it's yeah. just like a, you yeah. know to me I, you know my life's work I'm getting paid now. Yeah. I really yeah. am because yeah. I am really having a lot of fun with it. It's aggravating to me that I can't get through the woods like I used to. It It mm. is, but I'm accepting it because I can't do anything about it. Oh. But I'm still, you know, enjoying it so much. Yep. Well, yeah, Troy, we... um, y- you know, I, there's so many things I want to ask you. But I don't, you know, uh, the main thing that I wanted to do by interviewing you is get my listeners to meet you, number one, because I've always been impressed with you. I've always been impressed with your demeanor around adults, the way you you speak, you articulate exactly what you're thinking. Uh, not to embarrass you, but when you're called upon to pray at a meal or whatever, 
it's always, you know, you're an, a, a, a great example for young people to, to take, I, I guess the way I want to put this is, you take your life seriously. You have a lot of fun. You have a lot of skills. You have a lot of friends, all that thing. Do you have anything that you think that the young people your age out there should be thinking about or anything? I don't want to get too deep philosophically here, but what could you just kind of pass on to the other kids out there that maybe want to get involved in hunting, maybe don't know what they want to do exactly as far as their education, maybe don't know what to do about their faith, Anything like that that you could share? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first and foremost, just put your faith in God. That's about it's about all you can do. You know, just believe that He'll lead you in the path that that He wants you to go, and that you know He'll do do everything that needs to be done. And you just got to believe in Him and do what He believes you need to, need to do. So, uh, but in terms of just going through your life, coon hunting, and doing what you want to do, you know, just and everything keep god the center of your focus and everything that you do and just make sure that you know you're not going overly crazy and putting other things before him mm -hmm. and things like that in other words yeah. keep try to yeah, keep, keep your, your keep him your pr main priority that's 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 the main thing well it's very wise words and words for life and you know those of us of faith and I try not to get too deep into it in on this podcast and it's not because i'm ashamed of it at all but i you know i, I know it's a coon hunting podcast and people like to hear about the sport and all but there every day that i get up the first thing i do in the morning is speak to the lord and say you know thank you number one as my dad always said for life thank you for another day to watch the sun come up Thank you for another day of opportunity and help me to have the wisdom to take advantage of those opportunities and do what you would do. Because, you know, he's our example. He's the one that set the the course for our, for life. And and it's there in our faith. So it, it's, I appreciate you saying that because it shows in your life. And I know it's, I always say, parenting page, I know you were led down that, those beliefs are founded in your family that taught you those things from a very young age. But, uh, well, you've got a bright future, and the thing about it is uh, I think the Lone Pine Kennels are going to be in good hands when Randy gets uh, my age, which he's got a long way to go for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, a long we're, way. We're, do, we're, got, do, we're doing our, our best, you know, but uh, I'm I'm really proud of my boys and – my wife and my, you know, all my family and everything. It's been r really good here. And, you know, Troy's free to talk about his faith. And the, mm -hmm. if anybody ever heard this boy, you know, he, he talks to Christ like he's talking to a friend. And Absolutely. It, well, there again, I, I, I can't help it because it was my bringing, bringing too, but, you know, the Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, you know, yeah. and he really does. Well, yeah, you know, that, that, that's so good. And, uh, you know, I, what I would say to my listeners here, uh, you know, out there, if you're struggling with life a little bit and you're trying to do it on your own and you're kind of running up against a brick wall here and all, you know, it, it really, it's not easy, but in principle, it's so simple. Just give it to him. Jeez. Say, you know, I, you know, I can't carry this anymore. Just, you know, give it to him, and he'll, uh, he'll direct our, you know, our paths. The word says, in all our ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct our paths. So, well, yeah. Troy, I have really enjoyed this. We have been at it, guys. Just a couple, a minute and a half. We'll be an hour in. Yeah. So that's that's a good time, but. Uh, what about any hunts coming up for you? Anything you've been thinking about? You're going to yeah, be well, handling a dog? Yeah, he's going to – we need to get a few more wins on little Fran to get her granted out and get her TOC wins for mm -hmm. next year. She's just coming out of heat now, so we're going to be 
we haven't mm-hmm. been really paying attention to the hunts because these young dogs, you know, I mean, you, you, you seen last night, Steve, a lot of people would be having them entered, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. And we, we've, we, we entered uh fair at Walker days there, but that was kind of like a goal thing. And now we're still going back to, you know, boot camp here. And yeah. I, I like for them to be over ready whenever we take them yeah. because he, even at that, you know, like they're, when they're first getting adjusted to being out there with three other dogs and stuff there, it's going to take a little, you know, a couple hunts to get there. But, uh, so we've got, we've got some, some more strength and conditioning work to do on these young <laughs> dogs and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I can come up with another one that, you know, I can partner up with John at, on and, you know, keep him, hauling a dog for that says lone pine on it yeah. you know that's a, that's our yeah. that that's going to be our main focus you know for for years whenever i was doing this steve the the whole goal was to how how quick you could get a dog finished out you know you know back yeah. in the day oh, yeah. that was the yeah. big thing you know how young you could and i don't look at it like that anymore i look at it as like what that product is going to be at three and a half four mm-hmm. years old you know like are we going to are we going to be able to enter this dog in any hunt and feel like we've got a chance? To it, win. Yeah, you know, like a, a big chance to win. You know, so that's I don't care about the young stuff anymore. I want to put the groundwork in and have them super solid and be the right kind. You know, but whenever they reach that, you know, reach their prime and they're they're ready to tear it up with any company. You know, that's that's the, that's the main goal. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're we're working on it. We're we're working on it. I'm I'm really proud of this boy here. You know that was a great moment when he won that award there. Oh, that thing. absolutely. And yeah, I think he felt whenever they were started giving the awards out, and I had my phone out. I think he was starting to smell a rat a little bit about something was going <laughs> is on. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I, I would idea. say he doesn't miss a trick. You know, I tried to stay <laughs> back, and I didn't know when it was going to be his time. You know, mm-hmm. so I kept the phone up, but. Uh, yeah, it was it was a good thing. We were all there for it, you know, and stuff. And oh yeah, everybody, Rick and the other fellows have seen Troy grow up in this, you know. So it was it was yeah. all good. I was really appreciative of the board to to do yeah. that, you yeah. know. Well, and good so, for you for getting the remarks and everything on tape because on the phone because uh, that was great. I got to participate in it too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was a good good deal. Well, you know, it's been fun here, and we we got another. Are you going to get to go with us tonight, Troy? Or you got school coming up in the morning? No, I got. You? I got to go to school. Yeah, I got mm-hmm. you. Dog going that pesky. No, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for him to be done with that. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. got well, stuff summer's to do. coming here. We yeah. need to get That's out right. for the summer. Yeah, it, it, uh, right. I, I don't got much time left. I think it's coming into the teens nowadays that we yeah. have left to go. Oh, so. okay. That's good. We always ask our grandson down there, how many days you got? Oh, he knows. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we we went to another ceremony here not too long ago. Troy got inducted into the National that's Honor right. Society. Yeah. 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 So that was, that's a big deal. That was. Well, you know, yeah. that's Troy, you know, that, that many faceted thing, you know, you you you're you're getting it where it concerns uh, your education and you're putting practical uh that knowledge to work out there working on these houses with your dad and and then you know you're getting recognized for your coon hunting and and all that that's good you I wouldn't tell you to change a thing, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. The sky's the limit, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I've always pictured it as if you're going to be in school for 13 years or however however long, you might as well just make the most of it and try your hardest while you're there, you know. Great advice. Yep. Yep. Great advice. I couldn't say it better. In the Air Force, they paid us. Th- it was only $35 a month, but they had superior performance pay. And all that meant, really, is you cut your hair the way they wanted you to cut mm-hmm. it. You shined your shoes. You wore a clean uniform. You came to work on time. <laughs> you worked and you left, you know. And and 
35 bucks was 35 bucks to me because I was making a total of 600 bucks for a whole month. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I said, uh-huh. I, I had that same attitude, you know, hey, you know, it's, I might as well do it. And, and I knew so many guys that fought the system the whole four years. If they would have put a half the energy into yeah. doing their job, you know, they probably would have made rank and their pay would have come better and all this stuff. But good advice, Troy. Yeah. All right. We've had a, a good hour here, actually a little more, uh, with Randy Smith, and Troy Smith, Lone Pine Kennels here in Catanning, Pennsylvania. And uh, you guys out there that hear this podcast, if you've got a young coon hunter or a young person in your home, tell them to give it a, you know, enable them to listen to this podcast, the good advice that's been laid down here and and we're going to get after it after a while here, and Dark's going to be here before we know it and pick a puck. The one thing we can do here that I think is always cool, you can kind of just go down to, to the kennel and pick a door and open it up <laughs> and, go, and go coon hunt. You know? Well, that, we, we're, that's yeah. a nice thing. We're mm-hmm. blessed, we, you know, but we we put the work in. So, yeah. you know, that's, yep. yeah, we try to have something to showcase when people come, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yep. yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Uh, I sure enjoy the benefits of your hard work. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, friends, once again here with Randy Smith and Troy Smith, we're going to say goodbye for this week. Thank you for listening to Gone to the Dogs podcast. We appreciate very much our sponsors for this program, and you'll find them in the the notes, especially W Hunting Supply if you need anything for your hounds or yourself uh, in relation to this uh, Hound Lifestyle, call them up or uh, check them out online, dusupply.com. Until next time, this is Steve Fielder, and as always, I'm gone to the dogs. Mm-hmm.